The valence shell electron pair repulsion model is a great model to use to help predict the three-dimensional shape or molecular shape of small molecules around a central atom. The rules are simply determine the Lewis structure. Once you've determined the Lewis structure for your molecule, determine the number of regions of high electron density around that central atom, and then you can determine the electron geometry. After that, you determine the number of non-bonding pairs of electrons on a central atom. If there's no non-bonding pairs of electrons, then the electronic geometry is the same as the molecular geometry. If you have one or more non-bonding pairs of electrons on the central atom, then you determine the molecular geometry based on the shape of the bound atoms. Finally, you predict the bond angles allowing for bond distortion. This table helps us organize around the different types of shapes that you can have. Th this is the, there are five basic types of electronic geometry, five basic types. These types depend on the number of regions of high electronic density around the central atom. In this case, of course, the central atom has two regions of high electron density. Now, a region of high electron density includes a bonding pair of electrons or a non-bonding pair of electrons. Further, if you have a bonding pair, one region is, could include a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. So in this case, a region of high electron density, two regions, could indicate just a non-bonding pair of electrons or a single, double, or triple bond. In this case, we have two regions of high electron density. Here we have three and here we have four. We've named these linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral. We can also have a situation in which we have an expanded octet. In that case, you can have five or even six regions of high electron density around your central atom. In the case of five regions of high electron density, all of the bond angles between the, non -bond, between the regions of high electron density are no longer the same as they are in the case of the previous three electronic geometries. In this case, it's called trigonal bipyramidal. And three of our regions of high electron density are in the xy plane, and those are called the equatorial, equatorial positions. And two regions of high electron density are in what we would consider the z-axis, on the z-axis, intersecting um, by 90 degrees the xy plane. And those are called the axial positions. The axial positions are 180 degrees apart or 90 degrees down from the plane. The octahedral situation where you have six regions of high electron density, all angles between all regions of electron density are 90 degrees. In this case of the trigonal bipyramidal, of course, if all of the regions have bound atoms, the molecular geometry is named the same, trigonal bipyramidal. However, if you have one non-bonding pair of electrons, the non-bonding pair of electrons in the situation for the electronic trigonal bipyramidal will locate in an axial position. This is because, remember, the non-bonding pairs of electrons take up more region of space because they're not drawn away from the central atom, they reside closer to the central atom. So the um, resulting molecular geometry then, when this is found in the axial position, because, excuse me, the equatorial position, because it would be a full 120 degrees away from two of them, even though it's only 90 degrees away from the two axial positions, it's the f it allows for the most space in the equatorial position. This molecular geometry is called seesaw. And the, the um, bond angle here, of course, would be a little bit less than 120. In this case, where we would have two region or two regions non-bonding uh, pairs of electrons, they would both be in the axial position, and the resulting molecular shape is called T-shaped. And then finally, if you have three regions of um, non-bonding pairs of electrons, all three would find themselves in the equatorial position, and you would be left with two bonds as far apart in space as possible from each other and from the three non-bonding pairs of electrons, and the shape would end up linear. This, of course, is this shape less this atom tipped to its side. So all non-bonding are going to end up in the equatorial position in the case of the trigonal bipyramidal. For the octahedral, 
if all six regions of high electron density are um, containing bound atoms, then of course the molecular geometry is also called octahedral. In the case of one non-bonding pair of electrons, it's going to occupy any one of the, the spots, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to be left with square pyramidal. In the case of two non-bonding pairs of electrons and four bonding pairs of electrons for the octahedral electronic geometry, the two non-bonding pairs of electrons are going to occupy s as far apart in space from each other as possible, and that would be 180 degrees away from each other. That leaves you with what's called the square planar molecular geometry, and then if you have three regions uh, where you have non-bonding pairs of electrons, then you have the T-shape. So that's three non-bonding, three bonding. So these are some names of some molecular geometries associated with the electronic geometries that would occur with an expanded valence.